Welcome to the Biostock Studio at Medicon Village in Lund. Today's guest is Christopher Cook, CEO of Spotlight Listed Carbiotics. Welcome, Christopher. Thank you, Martin. Always a pleasure to come into the studio, and it's nice to be in person as well. Yeah, definitely. Yep. Uh, Christopher, could you start off by telling us a bit more of carbiotics, um, what you do? Yeah, it, uh, the company is a spin-off company from the Department of Biotechnology at Lund University, and the company is pioneering uh, microbiome healthcare, and we're doing that through several things, uh, different types of modulators, as well as diagnostic testing. And what is the microbiome? I guess is probably the next natural question. Yeah. It's these 30 trillion bacteria residing in our gut, which we've seen are linked to uh, immune system integrity, where 70% of the immune system resides in the gut, all the way to uh, triggering different uh, chronic and metabolic diseases as well, blood sugar regulation, cholesterol regulation. So what do we do? Our focus is on prebiotics or the soluble fiber. And we know that it's the fiber that's the food for your own host uh, probiotic bacteria. Uh, so our ambition is quite simple and our mission is, is very focused. It's to increase the consumption of soluble fiber in people's diets or prebiotics. And we're doing this through uh, introducing the best and most cost-effective prebiotic, which is this Axis product. Uh, it's finding as many channels and forms to bring this to market as ingredients, medical foods, therapeutics. And then it's introducing the most cost-effective testing to really demonstrate that the products have efficacy uh, in the everyday lives of people. Yes, and, y and you're planning a large-scale production of, of those fibers. Mm -hmm. And you told the market a couple of weeks ago that you're um, evaluating a new enzyme in this process. Yes. Um, why did you decide to do that? Uh, at the end of last year, uh, it came to our attention that there was a, a pre-launch or pre-market enzyme uh, that may be interesting to look at. Uh, so we wanted to defi definitely look at all enzymes that are available because the enzyme development process has always been the most difficult part. Um, we are a, a, a prebiotics um, microbiome health company. We're not an enzyme company. So the enzyme we developed was out of necessity. Uh, and need uh, rather than preference, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, and obviously, if there's a commercial enzyme coming down the pipeline, we need to evaluate it. In this case, we evaluated it in Q1, and uh, it turned out to be a, a very uh, efficient, effective enzyme, and therefore it warranted uh, further investigation in, in, in Q2. Obviously, if you change a, an element of your production process, that has a knock-on effect on the regulatory process, uh, conformity with the production processes, etc. Now, a decision like this is not an easy decision to make because it obviously has a short-term impact. Luckily, not significant given the fact that we're focusing on our pilot production at, at this scale, which is a 10-ton facility. But we saw that the benefits of uh, uh, potentially including this enzyme in, in the reg work would potentially knock one to two years off being able to launch a food product within, for example, the European Union. Uh, and when you can shorten your time to market by such a long period of time, then it's worth investigating and accepting these uh, uh, short-term adjustments to the time plan. Okay. So, so short term, it's it's a slight delay. Mm. Um, yes. And uh, well, speaking of uh, time plans, you you also communicated that you're um, launching your Linkat API. Yep. Uh, as scheduled. Yes. Uh, could you tell us more about that? Yeah. Uh, probably take a step back uh, mm. regarding the history of Linkat. Yeah. Uh, Linkat is our our diagnostic test, and we started out being a, a B two C play in this space, luckily enough reflecting upon sort of the early pioneers in this space, companies like Ubiome, et cetera. And we developed the test knowing that the future was going to be longitudinal testing, um, probably low cost longitudinal testing. And we created this ecosystem around a personalized prebiotic. This was the, the start of the company uh, back in uh, 2017, I guess, when we started our diagnostic development. Um, then we recognized the limitations of the single sample test. So we needed multiple samples, and therefore we had to re-engineer the microbiome test. Then we recognized the fact that a lot of players in this space, and there are notable players in Sweden as well as globally, um, were doing something that we weren't fully comfortable doing, uh, extrapolating on a single sample result and making uh, disease risk assessments, 
uh, dietary recommendations and comparativeness uh, or comparing people with population data, which we weren't really uh, comfortable doing. So it was natural, natural for us to take a step back and say to ourselves, what have we built? An extremely cost-effective test that could have significant appeal globally to different parties. Um, how should we launch this? Well, not on a B2C play. The B2B play seemed most natural, allowing others to tap into that ecosystem. And then it became even clearer for us that it was much better to launch it as an API, totally integrated into the back end of different companies. And our primary audience are health and wellness companies that are interested in collecting this data, doing bioinformatic analysis, seeing how different products uh, uh, impact gut health, and then monitoring this over time. Food and beverage companies, such as you know the earlier work with Mwell, Kellogg's, um, uh, uh, nutraceutical companies. Um, so the API is something that we felt was that needed to be launched. We communicated in Q4 that we're going to launch it. I love internal development projects. We have full control of all aspects. We met our goal of, of having that development process completed by the end of Q1. We're rolling it out now on the partners that we mentioned uh, in Q4. And then we'll continue to expand that partner network as well and roll that out. So what are we offering? We're offering the most cost-effective gut health test on the market at least half the price <laughs> of the nearest competitor. The most reliable test as well because it's multiple sample longitudinal testing and we're using courier service to uh, the customers and back to us or the patients. And then it's, it's the most flexible test. It's fully customizable. You can choose the type of analysis, how many samples, when the samples are collected. Uh, it's, it's totally white label, branded in the other company's name. We're the only party doing that today and it's just getting better. The costs are coming further down. The reliability is improving over time and it's becoming more and more customizable or flexible for our parties. So the learning process is highly iterative and improving over time, which I'm very excited about. And the goal is quite simple, 100 million euro consumer market for microbiome testing. We want to capture a large chunk of that. Understandably. Yes. And uh, to do that, you to develop your B2B concept, you've um, you recruited a new uh, salesperson mm. for that and also a new person to the board. Yes, yes. Um, could you tell us more about them? Yeah, well, uh, let's take a step back yeah. again. Uh, uh, the, the board members who are exiting, Mm -hmm. uh, John Moll and uh, Martin Linde. Yep. Uh, I have to say that their contributions over the, the past one to two years have been uh, substantial and uh, very beneficial for the company as well. John is highly professional in his space and I think that you know, he'll continue to be a, a key investor in uh, the life science industry going forward. So uh, uh, credit to him. Uh, same with Martin Linde, fantastic advice, uh, the network and uh, uh, I don't know if you know but we Myself and one, a couple co-founders started a company like Virusspec uh, back in March of last year, and that was subsequently sold to a company where he's, he's managing Agar Bio. Um, so obviously I have an interest in him focusing on that company and obviously his other roles, but he had to consolidate sort of different board positions and, and focus his attention on Agar Bio as well. So it was natural for him to exit. Looking at the new board members, uh, uh, Jonas Donison, 20, op, almost 25 years in the food and beverage industry, working with scale up new process lines, uh, M&A activity in different positions. It's going to be extremely valuable. Uh, um, uh, same with uh, uh, Christian Monson. Uh, more than 10 years in, in process uh, engineering work, process optimization work. Uh, so I I'm extremely happy. And half an hour after AGM, we had an in-depth process meeting where we went through everything and it's already paying dividends. So this is extremely good and I'm very happy about that moving forward as well. Uh, Eric Diener, head of sales, that's newly recruited as well. Uh, uh, my gut feeling is a, a extremely good profile. So he has the, the resume to support that. The chemistry is there and I think that uh, him entering the management team and, and really professionalizing the, you know, the, the sales function is going to be uh, is going to pay dividends going forward as well, and he's going to be shadowing a lot of the activities that I'm doing as well uh, in the company. So I definitely look forward to this new team of people in, in, in key functions going forward, and timing-wise, it's perfect as well. Yeah. Mm. So, so in conclusion, you have you have new people on the team. Mm. Uh, the Linkat API will support your the demand for your fibers. Um, mm. Could you give any guidance on when you will start large-scale production? 
Yeah, we have to pragmatically go through the process, and and you know the the site that we're building in in uh, Beaver at, Fo at Food Hills, uh, you know, some consider this pilot, some consider this small scale. It's you know it's, it's projected to be a, a ten ton per annum facility uh, for high end nutraceutical applications, uh, where you where the strategy is essentially to enter a higher price point, so a thirty euro plus per kg price point. Uh, obviously, that can produce quite interesting revenues in itself, and there I think that we've already communicated also in an ambition to scale up to 100 tons during uh, 2022 as well. Uh, so that, from a, a, a high-end food nutraceutical perspective, is large-scale production, mm. I think. I think going beyond that, we're, we're going to be continue to investigate the opportunities where we're tapping into our, our, the networks that we had established over the past five to six years. Uh, earlier, we looked at uh, wet, dry mills, first generation ethanol production. So large existing facilities where we could potentially uh, uh, enlist these companies as toll manufacturers, et cetera. So ways to avoid significant capital cost, uh, leverage existing uh, investments that have been made, and still retain uh, good margins on the products. That's what we're going to lo be looking for going forward. And at the end of the day, you want to be close to the raw material and you want to be close to the customers. And you want to avoid significant capex with this type of technology. So I'm not talking about licensing out the technology. I'm talking about finding appropriate toll managers. And we have those networks and we're going to be tapping into them as well to see whether uh, they can support that type of large scale expansion going into the thousands of tons. That's the ambition. Sounds, uh, sounds uh, like it's uh, many reasons to, uh, to keep following you uh, going forward. That's nice of you to say, yeah. Martin. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Christopher, for coming. A uh, pleasure. Thank you.